forward. Welcome to In Conversation With, a podcast where I get to talk to my favorite artists, esotericists, writers, organizers, and people who I think are doing really interesting shit in the world. I'm your host, Shane the Catskills, a queer artist, tarotist, intuition facilitator, pleasure activist, organizer, library clerk, and author of the book, Tarot is Questions, published by Cosmic Doghouse Press. I am living on a sopus land currently known as the town of Shandaken, Ulster County, New York, in the Catskill Mountains. Today, I have the great good fortune to be in conversation with Roberta Aylward. Creative expression has been essential to Roberta's understanding of the world and where she finds her clearest voice. She credits her high school art instructors, Martin Davis and Milton Harley, for providing a strong foundation for valuing art in her life. She received a BFA with a concentration in painting from the College of Santa Fe in New Mexico in 1991. Roberta lives in Portland, Oregon with her husband, their 13-year-old son, and their cat. She works in her home studio and practices drawing, collage, and photography in service of her painting. Roberta exhibits her art on her website and in person, opening her studio to the public twice a year. Her work is included in many private collections and has been part of group exhibitions at the Painting Center in New York, Tacoma Art Museum, Oregon College of Art and Craft, and many other exhibition spaces. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Roberta, welcome to In Conversation With. Thank you for making the time to talk with me today. Shay, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here talking with you today. Yay. That was lovely. Um, you know, we were talking actually before we hit record that you and I haven't had a catch up in a long time. So this feels like um, a delicious opportunity, actually. Yeah, you're right. It's been more than a year yeah. and I'm looking forward to catching up. So um, I well actually, OK, so let's check in. I was like so excited to get to like how we know each other that I forgot the check in part. I know I'm ready for that part, too. <laughs> Great. How are you arriving? What is the quality of your body, heart, mind in this moment? Oh, I love that question. The quality of my body, heart, mind. Um, I'm going to just take a deep breath. Exhale, actually. <laughs> uh, I am arriving full of energy. Um, buzzing actually, I'm thinking of like, um, oh, the hummingbird, I, like hummingbirds in the yard, just like zipping around. So, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, excited energy and joy. Hmm. How I are you arriving? <laughs> I am arriving. I've had a really sweet day. Um, I've had one of those days where I get to like do all the things that I want to do. Um, I got to have a short phone call with my friend, Hakeem. We have video visits once a week. He's incarcerated in Illinois and our video visit got canceled because who knows why. So he managed to call and we had a, a 15 minute call, which is always delightful to talk to him. We actually talked about me interviewing him on this podcast, which oh. we're going to try and figure out how to do in little 15 minute increments. Cause that's how he gets his phone calls there. So I got to do that. I got to have, um, a painting, my vision, visual medicine facilitator training class today, which was amazing. Um, I got to connect with um, a possible collaborator and then I'm talking to you. So I just feel like it's been one um, lovely thing after another and it's kept me offline, which has also been really good. <laughs> so yeah, my, those... yeah, I feel, I'm feeling a lot of joy too, actually. Is how mm. I'm driving. Yeah, I can feel it. Those sound like really wonderful connections. Yeah, here's to like connections. So speaking of connections, how do we know each other? How do we meet? So so I'm going to say what I remember and then I want to okay. hear what you remember. Okay. I remember hearing about you first from our mutual friend Robin Love. Robin. And, yeah, I know, shout out to Robin Love and starting to follow you on Instagram when I got on Instagram. And then we also had this overlap, this weird Venn diagram with our mutual friend, Finn Schubert, who you know from a co-working space and who I know because he's a friend of mine. So there was that connection. Right. And, and then um, we did this sort of uh, tarot collaboration briefly 
um, sort of fragmentedly, but also deliciously. Yeah, actually, it was you and me and Robin Love and Chelsea Green. And I have that deck actually up on my altar um, mm. upstairs. So we got to actually kind of do a little creative work together in collaboration, which was amazing. And then we just kind of, um, yeah, I mean, what do you remember? I feel like there's so many different threads there. Yeah, those threads um, all sound familiar. I um, I did some research. I, I went to Google uh, Gmail and I, I, I thought, well, Love I'll just you. find the earliest email I have of, you know, and it was your, uh, I joined your um, newsletter, your um, wonderful monthly, super generous share of your inspirations and your inquiries. So this one uh, is Saturday, February 1st, 2020. So I'm thinking I must step, must have been um, through Robin Love. And so this is what I remember, um, you know, this is my first like introduction to you. Um, and this was the, you had a um, card, a card of the month and the Hierophant was the card. And it, oh my gosh, yeah, you this have is documentation. I'm like oh, yeah. loving it's this. The, uh, it's the uh, Hierophant card from the, the deck is the Wild Unknown Tarot deck. And, you know, I love crows. Um, I, I watch them every, every morning and evening, it seems like flying over the house. Um, so yeah, that's 2020. So that's, this has been a good. That was right before uh, the pandemic started. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, this is before the pandemic. Or before uh, lockdown at least. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that as like March 13th in my memory. Yes. Um, and yeah, so, so yeah, how we met. And of course, the uh, that the collaboration time, um, which was your invitation to um, reflect and create based on your uh, keywords. I mean, just love being part of that that process. And and then of course you went on to uh, write your book based on those. Uh, well, questions that came after the keywords. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the keyword, no. you know, I think about um, how some of what Robin is using in Jinker came <gasps> from that project. Jinker. And, you know, it's just, I feel like that, oh. that sort of, um, you know, and then I have the deck that you sent me this like incredible, like bespoke one of a kind deck that you oh. made from the keywords, you know, Thank you have you. such a relationship. I think part of our connection is through tarot. I mean, because you have such a connection to it that is, um, I mean, everybody's relationship with the tarot is personal and idiosyncratic, but I really associate yours with, um, the Marseille and the air element in general, sort of like, oh you know, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, you know, I, sh I showed up to this conversation feeling like, I don't know anything about tarot. Like I'm a beginner. I I'm, I'm not that I don't like, and what, what I think I'm trying to say or what I mean is that, right, what you're saying, and thank you, like everyone's connection is totally unique. Like I want to talk about, oh, the process of shuffling the cards and how like the Marseille deck has been um, like taking a break. Is that uh, right? What are you, what are you? Yeah, yeah. These days? So I, um, this, these days, so I was gifted a deck. Um, uh, from my friend Liz Browski, who's an who's an also an artist, and she gave me the um, the Coleman, Pamela Coleman Smith deck, which is the Centennial edition, I believe. I'm attracted to the the green. Um, so, so this would be called the uh, Waitsmith. Smith. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, totally. What would you call this deck? The I would the, call it the Smith Rider Weight or Smith Rider Weight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As long as Smith's name Smith is in is, there. Smith is first, right? So, I mean, exactly. these are the image. This is that's what I'm relating to is the 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 paintings. Can you hold up the back the again of the card? Yeah, yeah, so that's her signature in the corner. Yeah, I love that. It reminds yeah. me of a snake. It looks to me like a snake. Yeah, beautiful. Hawaii. And 
What are the um, images? Are they just turn over the, yeah. I like the kind of muted colors. Yeah. And I was with uh, my friend Liz one day and she had this deck and I just love this color. And this is like the color that you're wearing today, which yes, is really I, I was thinking that glasses too. and yeah. I call it celadon, you know, like in the, the ceramic glaze. Then of course the flower, which is, uh, I suppose it's a rose, but that has been getting my attention lately because I want to call it an Edelweiss. I don't know why I looked up Edelweiss, um, on the internet. It's a flower. I had an Edelweiss pin that I, that I, um, think was my grandmother's. I just, I don't know what happened to it. It's sort of like this, this thing that I lost in my life, but it's, you know, it's coming up for me as like, oh, this, you know, piece of my family history. So yeah, I'm going to call it an Edelweiss for now. Um, so, oh, anyway, so I love the Marseille because I love, I mean, just going back to the root of it, I love like pl playing cards. I've always loved playing cards. And I was remembering, remembering this pastel drawing I did in high school without any knowledge of the tarot. Um, it didn't have tarot cards in it, but it had playing cards in it. Like I wanted to depict, depict playing cards in my still life. Wow. And I remember I had a 10 and a three because that's my birthday, October 3rd. And then I was trying, I don't have a picture of it. And I was trying to remember like, ah, oh, what? What, um, I think it was, you know, maybe 10 of, um, clubs and three of hearts, I'm guessing, you know, but, um, no. I, you know, like, I don't, there's part of me that like wants to know everything. I'm, I don't like all the details. Um, and like right now, like, I'm just aware of like wanting to like, let that go. Like, I don't need to know all the details and why and like things about my personal history or mm. anyway the so so my my current practice is i um i pull two cards from this um this deck this smith weight deck every day and i pulled someone just asked me um i was online with a, a friend lois who's an accountability partner uh, for, um, like, a in, a our professional creative practice around our, our, our website. Shout out and to accountability is, partners. Yeah. And this is, you know, I found two accountability partners through, uh, uh, you had mentioned the, um, like professional development group I was part of, um, in the past where I, um, um, met Finn online. Uh, and, and that was, uh, that wasn't necessarily for, for art. It was for creatives, uh, maybe like wellness professionals too. If I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, I found one for artists, <laughs> like for, um, and it's called, um, workshop with a V and, um, the creator is, uh, Patty Johnson. And that was, uh, earlier this year. So through that group, I have two different accountability partners and I'm, it's really helped me grow a lot uh, in the professional part of my creative practice. I love that. So Lois, my website accountability partner, she, we were talking and I said something about tarot. And then I had that sort of pause, like, do you, like, do you know what I'm talking about? Or what do you, <laughs> do you, do you have a tarot deck or I don't know. Yeah. And she just like, pull, she just like picks up the star card. And, and I was like, oh, okay. You, Anyway, and then I said, oh, I'd pull two cards. And she said, why do you pull two? And I said, oh, um, because then they're in, um, because they're in relationship to each other. Yes. I was like, oh yeah, I need, the reason I joined the, um, the, the professional art um, group was because I watched the webinar and the question in the webinar was, oh, are you an artist of one? Like, are you trying to do everything by yourself? Mm. Isol isolated and I would like immediately raise my hand like uh, it was recorded webinar but I was like me, me yes please get me like I need to get out of this way of thinking mm. so I so I was pulled too 
you know, it's interesting, like when I, when I run my tarot cohorts and we're doing study together, you know, I, I start them off with like one, you know, looking at one card and doing a practice with one card, but then I immediately, you know, go to two. It's like, there, there's a dimensionality that happens with two. It's like the card means something kind of by itself. You know, you look at the image and like, you know what it means, but then you put another card next to it and it kind of changes the valence of both of them. Like how do they, how do they create meaning in relationship with each other? So I love that you do that. You also um, mentioned that you pulled a tarot card when you were inquiring about this upcoming conversation that we're having right now. I did. Tell I did about that. I, I, a, was... I love that you did that. <laughs> a. I did. I was uh, meeting with Liz, the gifter of this deck, and um, we meet to talk about um, like astrology and tarot and art. And I said, well, I'm going to, while, while you're here, you know, as uh, almost kind of like in a, another accountability practice, I said, I'm going to pull a card about this up upcoming conversation with Shay. And, and I'm glad that I, like, she was there. <laughs> she even texted me this morning, like, did you, how the conversation go? And, did, you know, I want to hear more about your card and if it came up. So um, I pulled um, death uh, reversed. And I don't know how you feel about reversed cards and you can let me know, but um, I, I, just recently started um, um, letting them be reversed if they come up as reversed. So, um, yeah, so that, so I- What did you uh, make of that? Well, I was like, oh, um, <laughs> as uh, we always do when we yeah, pull the I know, death but card, I, let's just be real no, about it. I mean, it. I don't, I like the death card because it makes me um, think about this time of year. Um, um, I want to say compost. I don't know why. Um, and, um, you know, Liz said, oh, well, that makes like sense. You're, you talk about, um, is it the way of the rose or, mm -hmm. yeah. um, just thinking of like all the things I hear and read in your newsletter. Oh, well, your let's talk about it series, you know, conversations about um, money, which I participated in. And the other one was one was death. Yeah. I, you know, I skipped, I skipped that one. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll watch a record. <laughs> I, um, so, no. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought this just means we're, um, we're not speaking of things superficial. And our, that today too. is like All Souls Day or, you know, three days of Halloween. Um, yes. You know, this is, you know, the, is the day the of dead the day. Yeah. 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 So I thought, um, yeah. And, you know, death, rebirth, um, you know, it's like a, cre it's a real, it like taps into what we're talking about in terms of creativity and um, and, and then again, it was, it was upside down. It was reversed, which just means to me that it was like, pay more attention to it. I love that. I don't read reversals, but several of my students do. And I feel like I'm learning a lot from them about how they read them, um, as a sort of point of emphasis, um, like what you're talking about, or, you know, they're just very natural about it. I just never, um, I was like, I have enough to okay. learn without, you know, making it more complicated, but I actually really, um, appreciate, uh, people who read reversals. I feel like I learn a lot from them. And I just love that you pulled this, the death card reversed. It's today's the day of the dead. Um, we're in Scorpio season. That's the astrological association with the death card and your take about, um, that we're not talking about surface things. I feel like that is completely, yeah. The first thought I had when I saw it was sort of turning the soil over which I think is analogous to what you're saying about like not talking about service things, but like getting under things a little bit. Um, yeah. It's that. like where the rubs and all the, you know, yeah. Moist Life compost. Is. Yeah. Uh, also I want to say like when I, when I look at tarot cards and that's what I liked about um, the Marseille deck, what I like about the Marseille deck is like, I like the colors. I mean, I'm an artist. I like the primary palette 
I've, I love the way traditional playing cards look. I like the design of them. I, I mean, I'm just, I, I, so I, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I read the cards literally. So when they're upside, I'm an abstract painter. So when I look, when I pull, when I look at these cards and especially when there are two, I look for like relationships, like, oh, the horizon's meeting up or this is connected to that. When I put the cards together, you know, like today I have two upside down um, wands and I was like, this couldn't be more of like the seven and the eight of like an abstract painting here you know it's like a game of pickup sticks and then I could just get to start playing with all of my associations I feel like I'm seeing something completely fresh just by looking at those two next to each other reversed you know I remember this from were you in one of my tarot classes yeah I, yeah, yeah, I, I okay. was in at least one of them right <laughs> yes I remember this because <clears throat> the way that you look at, I mean, the image is everything to me, the image, you know, people, you know, use, I wrote a tarot book, so I'm not going to like tell anyone they shouldn't look things up in a book, but I do tell my students, like your interaction with the image is everything. Like that's your body, heart, mind is oh, the guide. Yeah. 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 Your interaction body, with the image mind. is, is everything. So your, you know, the fact that you're an artist, do you consider yourself actually, cause you know, hearing you talk about tarot and astrology in your sort of artist accountability situation do you do you consider divination do you consider yourself a, divin, a divinatory artist do you consider divination part of your process of art making that's a great question um i will say what i'm um practicing i think is integration because every i i think you know, I've always been an artist and that's a, like a label or a, um, it's a thing like, and then I became a mother and then it's like art over here, mother over here, you mm -hmm. know, everything has been separated and it's like, I don't know where to like put, you know, like astrology or tarot or, um, like now I'm thinking about collaboration. Um, so do I consider myself uh a divinatory artist like uh, you know who comes to mind is like hill yeah hilma. Hil hilma off clint like that's what she was i don't know if that's what she called herself but like she was channeling um and she was so way ahead of her time um I so love, i love what you're saying though about like actually uh just not making these things so separate, like your tarot practice and your interest in astrology and your, you know, these different. Yeah, they're, yeah. My, my pra actual practice is all, sure, I do these things every day. So they're all integrated. So, yes, is that the answer is yes. But, and then it's like, how do I present myself? Yeah. You know, I present you know, like on social media or I'm having a, an open studio, you know, I, I don't, so maybe this is still more private, um, Interesting. for me. Um, be, I, and I don't know why, um, it's, but, but not with like, yeah, not in safe spaces, you know, <laughs> I, this is a safe space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I and hear... I don't know why. Yeah. And I'm not sure it's something I'm still, um, considering. I mean, I feel like I have a lot to offer in terms of tarot. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's an understatement. I'm glad to hear you say it out loud so you can hear yourself say it. Yeah, I do think you have a lot to offer. And I want to hear about um, what collaboration is, you know, um, stirring up for you right now. And also, you know, how I, I think when I think about collaboration, I always think of the three of pentacles or the three of coins or the three of discs or whatever. Um, the three of diamonds, I guess it would be in a playing card deck. And yeah, if you, can you just say a little bit about what your um, collaborations look like right now? Yeah, I, um, you know, and I have been pulling the empress, which is the three, the three, but yeah. you know, yeah. 
up, up and down and up and down and up and down. She keeps showing up. She'll take you for a ride. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so currently I, um, I started this collaboration with seven other artists earlier. Let's see. It's November earlier this You year. initiated it? Yes, I did. I initiated it. I don't have any fire in my chart, my birth chart, astro astrological birth chart. And um, I initiated it. I'm really proud of that. Uh, because well, you have a lot of cardinal placements, don't you, in your chart? I have a lot in Libra. That's a cardinal. Yeah. yeah so card that's a very initiatory energy, actually. Okay. I always yeah. thought, well, it's opposite Aries and Aries is the initiator, but maybe that's. I think of all the cardinal yeah. signs, regardless yeah. of element as being like, I love that you in initiated a seven artist collaboration. Okay. Tell me everything. Yeah. So it's eight artists, including me. Uh -huh. And, um, I, the thought I had earlier this year was why is every, why is every work of art like created by one person. And that's not true, but just in general, like everything is signed by one person. You know, like I, I can remember the art in the halls of my elementary school, you know, like this is a Van Gogh and this is a Picasso and this is the Mona Lisa and the, you know, you know, this is Vinci and this is, I you never saw two signatures on the bottom of any painting. Uh, so I thought, well, um, I want to um, initiate a project where, so I just, instead of going from one to two, I went from one to eight. So I invited seven artists to um, create um, eight pieces of work. Uh, one of the artists is Helen Hebert. Uh, she is a um, paper maker, a paper artist in Colorado. Uh, uh, she's one of the artists and she created uh, eight pieces of eight by eight inch paper. So you might be asking like, why is everything eight? I just stuck with eight. Eight is, um, you know what you were talking about Scorpio earlier. Eight is, is eight Scorpio. I don't know. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's some eight, eight association there. Uh, so I made a, um, Google doc. I sent out the paper to these artists. And the idea is everyone is going to touch each piece once. So there are some, there are some rules. There's some framework. You're not going to receive a piece from the same artist twice. So everything is going to be, is kind of randomized. And so, and then at the end, I want to have, you know, exhibit these pieces framed in um, an exhibit where we have eight, the eight collaborative pieces and then eight pieces, you know, one, one piece represent representative of each artist in the group. Wow. So, but every, but everyone is touching every work in some form or fashion. Yes. Everyone. And there are no rules like what you can do with it. So I, you know, I was, I was the, um, you know, I'm a participant and also the, um, you know, facil facilitator. So I got eight envelopes and eight pieces of glassine. Do you enjoy that part of the process? Yeah. 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 And then, so here's, here's, you know, one that is, has, uh, two, two people have worked on it. Two artists have worked on it. And this is paper made by Helen Hebert. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a hundred percent cotton paper. Wow. Handmade paper. That was important to me too, that just to have a nice, beautiful base, eight, eight inches by eight inches. And well, um, yeah, yeah. It's well, it also makes me think of like this idea that, um, and this is making me think of one of Robin's episodes of small things brought together, highly recommend, but like the idea that, um, a painting by Van Gogh, you know, is like, um, or a painting by anyone who signs their signature. It's like somebody made the paper or somebody will, you know, the, somebody, you know, that like somebody, how, how many artists these days make all their own pigments and, you know, make their paper, not many. So it's like even a so-called work, work by a single artist, 
I feel like what you're doing is really showing how nothing is actually made by just one person. You know, yeah. somebody is making the paper somewhere. In this case, you know who's making it, you know, but I feel like it really just yeah. highlights the, the sort of, it makes slippery the notion that any one person creates any one thing. Yeah, there, I, I paint a lot of paintings on these wood, wood panels that are created by Matthew McCalmont, who is an artist and um, craftsman in Portland, who makes a lot of beautiful wood panels, shaped panels, stretcher bars, frames that are the base for a lot of people's art. So I want to, you know, make sure I have his name on the panel. Mm. And so I love adding the names, you know, like this is, this is the, the, this is the panel. And then this is my painting. And this is who took a photograph of it for me. And this is, you know, just all, all of those, right. Where the paint came from. I like, I like to have those things out in the open. I think this sounds like such an incredible, um, I mean, how is it working on it? How does it feel? It's very satisfying. Um, and yeah, I think I, I, for me, I'm really excited to see how they turn out, but obviously the process is more important than the finished piece. Um, yeah, I just like the process. I know I was reading your artist statement and I, and, and, and like, I highlighted that, you know, all guided by themes related to process. And I think that that is something else that you and I really have in common that, that, you know, in, in Buddhism, they say like form is emptiness, emptiness is form. I mean, to me, it's like the process is what you're doing. Like the process, yes, your is- pro- let's talk about your process for a minute. I want to say like nurturing nurturing like and generous this like the questions that you wrote out and sent to me or just the whole all the process of like creating this conversation there's a lot of preparation and care like put into that process and I can tell when I get your newsletter too I mean this is you've done a lot of research and cared and thought about uh, in uh, the the work that you're sharing, how you're sharing it, naming all the names of, you know, everyone who's inspired you along the way. Yeah. I think, pro- yeah, process is important. Thank you for reflecting that back to me. I'm glad that that's your experience of, um, you know, like initiating this, this conversation and my newsletter, it's, that's amazing to hear. Um, I mean, I felt it so much in my collaboration, collaboration with Aurora about the book, you know, that like how good the process felt is like, that's what people are receiving when they open up the package in the mail is like, it's the physical object, but that physical object is like completely imbued with sort of our amazing experience of like working together and making it and figuring things out and you know um and it's why like writing the acknowledgments is actually the best part because it's like where I get to reflect on like you know everyone who's influenced me and like you know you're in there I feel like you know you are Mm. someone who's um devotion to process you know here's here's something about about um that I wanted to make sure I mentioned is that when Robin interviewed you for small things brought (laughs) together, um, I remember that I finished watching it and I immediately went into my studio and started painting. Oh, that was the, the, I love that the effect that that conversation and hearing about your process had on me. And I feel like that's, you know, you have such a way of talking about what you're up to and why and what you're interested in. And there's a real playfulness to it, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's like a way of talking about, um, rigor and discipline. That's like playful and, and, you know, that's not 
harsh. You know what I mean? That's kind mm-hmm. of how I mm-hmm. experience. Like, you know, you have these practices that you do every day and you're, you know, you've been a working artist for a long time. And like, you know, I, but I always got, get the sense that you're like curious and playful about what you're up to. And, and I feel like that's such a, um, such a generous thing to model, you know, of what discipline and rigor can, can actually be like. Mm, Thank you. Yeah. I, um, discipline and rigor through those resonate or do you not, do you, do you not? No, I, 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 um, Yes. Yes. No, I know, like I have a, I have a sketchbook right here called morning drawings and I have one at my bed called bedtime drawings, which I just started doing because that's what I, I, you know, and I keep having to keep, you have to keep changing the process because for me, I'll do something for a while. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, that just falls off the plate or is not interesting anymore. But yeah, I know that that's what devotion looks like is daily. Um, and yeah, I think that comes naturally to me, the, like wanting to work at it, wanting to paint, wanting to, wanting to create, you know, get my hands dirty. Um, but I think I'm also now feeling into the, like the, all the, the space in between where like, oh, I need to rest or oh i haven't painted in you know two months and that's not um that's part of the process too yes so not not every day so like what do i do every day you know what i mean i i I try to remind myself with like my hand as a reminder like oh sleep eat breathe um what was it? Sleep, eat, breathe, make art was, was one of the exercise, like move my body. Like that. One of your questions is what, um, what, what is it? What, what question are you living into? Yeah. And that question is what, like, what's enough? Mm. Like, what is enough? What is it? And then I, and then I, I just made me so like I was like, oh, finally, like I can re like, and like, this is enough. Like every, if I do one thing, that's enough. Like, I just sort of felt like I didn't have to strive anymore to make something or prove something or. I I love this like dialectic that you're drawing out between devotion and enough and enoughness or, or rest, we might call it, or trust, we might call it, you know, that because when you said devotion means every day, I had this little glitch, like, you know, I'm failing. Yeah, no, I can't. can't. Right. Yeah. And then you turned it like, like, yeah. yeah, uh, That the pauses, the spaces in between the rest, the like period of time where you're not painting is part of the process because that is also part of the process, you know? Yeah. Thanks for that. I like to remind remind myself of that, that when I paint a painting, I'm working on like a series of paintings right now and I'm really, really enjoying them. And I I suppose I've always asked myself that like, oh, is this enough? Like, is this, is this, is this finished or, and just to realize that something that I paint today is, you know, it's layered on top of all the other paintings that I've done throughout my life is is satisfying so it doesn't have to be um not a masterpiece but it doesn't have to be I think undone is the word that I'm Mm. sort of Mm. playing with right now that I can let it be unfinished I can let it be undone and then calling it that was like oh it's it is done (laughs) it's yeah. What is, yeah. It's what it's is, very close to like, what is enoughness is like, what is doneness, you know, like what is. Yeah. Doneness? And I also like undone as like, if you're undone, like you're like unraveled, yeah. you're just, yeah. you know, like keeping, <laughs> can't keep like holding <laughs> on to everything for so long, you Ugh. know, at some point you just are on, un, you're undone. I love kind of the way I feel like Robin is also like this in, in her own way. 
um, of like really seeing everything as part of the, of, of the process, like, and that the, the process is not incidental. It is the thing that the thing is the process. Yeah. There's not something apart from the process. Yeah. The process is the thing. Yeah. I love that. It's that that's very satisfying. And I, 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 I am currently in a, in a class with that, that Robin is teaching. Robin love is teaching oh, yoga yes. and creativity. It's a s- eight week class on Sundays. And I think we're in coming up on week seven. Um, and yeah, if you were to ask me what's inspiring me now, I thought, oh, inspiration is breath, you know, and that's, I mean, I just immediately thought of Robin, um, not just because it's that yoga is part of the process, but it's not, you know, I, my first yoga classes in, I don't know, my twenties or were like fitness classes, you know, I yeah. didn't know what yoga was. I still yeah. am learning. Still I'm learning. Anyway, the way that um she can um that I can breathe in that class, just just inhaling and exhaling, yeah, is just amazing. And then what comes out of that class, just these inquiries is 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 really inspiring me now. Yeah, I've been hearing just, you know, um in general about just the magic that's happening in that, in, in that space that she's doing. And it feels like, you know, her bringing together her whole life of like yoga and creativity. And it's like, she's like, you know, giving the thing that she's born to give, you know? Yeah. That class is, uh, her yoga space is Atta yoga. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, I love that. I also love that you're answering some of the quick fire questions as we go. Oh, those are quick fire questions. No, no, no. I I think, (laughs) I think that's an excellent, I love we're having our own process here. It's good. Throw them in at any time because um, there's certain things I want to ask you about. And when those questions come to you, there's no out of order. There's just the way we're doing. Yeah, no, I like out. I like out of order. I just, yeah, I just wanted to say that piece about uh, Robin. Yeah love before just to make sure it's in, it's included and in the jinker yeah. she's always inspiring me i think um i wanted to ask you about your upcoming open studio i've heard you just sort of mention this i've seen it kind of on instagram like what actually happens like what is it like not to be whatever but like i i don't think i've ever been to an open studio like talk about the whole thing if you will, I will. yeah thanks i I'm having an open studio on Saturday, November 18th, and I had one on Mother's Day uh, earlier this year. And I've had open studios in the past. And what it is, is um, opening my door. It's pretty, I like, I just, instead of trying to figure it all out, I just realized, oh, it's just opening my door. Of course, there's a lot that goes along with that. Uh, I'm sitting in my studio right now. I This is uh, the garage of our home. Uh, we've lived here for 10 years and it's a remodeled space. So it has heat, it has skylights, it has a uh, nice light. And I'm, I'm super fortunate to have the space to uh, make my work. Uh, so as I figure out like how to be, um, like how to show my work. I've, I've never, I've, I just thought, okay, this is going to be the easiest way. I'm not represented by a gallery. I do have a website. So I am learning how to share my work online. And I just created a, uh, a new website. Um, it's beautiful, by the way, linked in the notes. Gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to take that in because I want to say it's not finished, but it's, you know, it's a work in progress. Um, so I decided, you know, I just love these in-person connections. And I thought, oh, if one person shows up on November 18th and I have, I get to show them my work in person and have a conversation about it. I'm happy. Um, 
So I had, I, I had one, um, earlier this year, I, I wasn't planning on, on having one. I was at another a person's sale sitting in a group. And so, I think someone asked me about my work and I said, Oh, well, what about this? Um, or, or Mo mother's day, would that be a good day for an open studio for me? And they're like, yeah, we'll come. So I, so I, I created on a mother's day because I thought that's what I wanted to do. Like with my mother's day. So if you can show up, show up, that's great. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll do it twice a year. And again, there's this underlying structure that I wanted to like abide by like, okay, six, six months apart, you know, like the, the, the equinoxes or the solstices, I wanted to keep it on. It's not really a, it's not really on one of those days, but I just thought, okay, I'll do it at two times during the year. Oh, beautiful. So it's, a, it's an experiment, but it's an excuse for me to have in-person uh, connection relationship around yeah. my art. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And, you know, there's one thing of like, you know, seeing somebody's work online, um, which because we live at such a distance from each other, that's how I see your work, but to actually be able to go into somebody's studio, which is, you know, it's such a, um, it's kind of where the magic happens, you know, and see, yeah, and work, you know, in there's a wonderful, um, uh, um, event that happens in Portland every year and it's called Portland open studios. And it's, it's in October. It's usually the first and second or second and third weekend in October. And so that's available to me. You can, you can, um, apply and be a part of that. And I just went around and visited a lot of artist studios in October. And the reason I, I didn't do that or don't always do that, it's because, um, my, uh, husband and I both celebrate our birthdays in the, in, and our anniversary in the first two weeks of October. So wow. that's, we're busy. That's a good reason to miss. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention that is a great, that is a great opportunity to see artists working in their studios. Well, I think this is going to come out. This our inner our conversation is going to come out on the eleventh of November. So right before your open studio happens. So oh, great. Well, you know, it's great if people can like actually hear it and get there. I'll shout that out too. Um, and you yeah, can any... your own shout out about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else that you is on your mind or that you want to talk about before we move to the quick fire round? The quick fire round. Um, I mean, and it doesn't have to be like actually like quick. We can take as much time as we feel like it. But is there anything before we get to that that you want to say um, or talk about? Um, I think only I just I have like. What I did in preparation for this conversation was I, you know, I have a little, like I picked some calendula. I just wanted to share these things with you. Oh, <laughs> it's just like, I love it's that still blooming so and it's November. And it, I don't know. I thought it was calming. I was a little nervous. So I picked oh some calendula. God, I love that. I have your, this email, I have your book, Tarot Has Questions. I, yeah, I just thought, oh, I, I have some, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that like touch the tangible is really important to me, mm. you know, and here we are, um, we are in the, um, air, the realm of air. Yes. You know? So I think that's what I was wanting to say is, oh, right. I'm touching. Like I have this. I've been holding, um, this the whole time we've been talking with, oh, which is a piece of, um, rose, rose quartz. I love that. Yeah. And it's just, it's the perfect size and it warms up when I hold it, but it's cold otherwise. So yeah, I'm also having a very tactile experience over here while we're talking. Um, I didn't mention the moon, which is surprising. <laughs> I can't believe we, I, I think we should talk a little bit about the moon. Thank you. I love the moon. And um, anyone that knows me knows that I love the moon and I'm always taking pictures of the moon. And it's a great reason to follow your Instagram feed is just for the moon pictures. 
and your moon commentaries. And thank you. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. another thing. Like I don't integrate that. I have this should like, Oh, my, you know, Instagram, it's my art Instagram, but I just want it to be like chock full of everything. It is but actually, it's, a, it, it's yeah. a beautiful, it, I just have to say it's a beautiful account. It's a beautiful social oh. media account in that it's, um, I feel nourished when I am like in your, Oh face. yeah. Thank you. And the moon today is the moon is in cancer, which is the sign of the moon. And, and it's, it's, um, a waning gibbous. Is that where we're at right now? Yeah. It was just full. It was just full. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just wanted to sit, mention the moon. Yeah. She's out in the morning now when I take my walk. Cause it just, you know, it's just past full and when the sky is clear in the morning, it's still not quite sun hasn't come up yet. It's like the way the moon looks kind of like a coin slipped in a pocket part way. You know? mm, yeah. I mean, I really love to like get a nice look at her every morning. I mean, she's not out in the morning before it's full, but, um, the waning yeah. period is when I really get to observe her. Mm. I like how the moon will surprise me. I will, you know, just look up like, oh, there's Hello. the moon. And you would think like with all of my tracking and trying to figure out when and okay, when's the moon rise? When's the moon set? When, you know, she that can I still would sneak know, up on you. I would know. She always does. It's like, oh, look, oh, there's the moon. <laughs> or yeah. how fast, a pace. That's an interesting thing. Like we could talk about pace for a long time, but you know, when the moon is setting super fast, you know, but then sometimes she'll just sort of hang there in the sky for a long time. Yeah. Or like when she's rising, she's like big and full. And then like a little later, like a little, you know, I know, I know um, she gives me so much comfort in these times. Mm -hmm. And always, I think to just think that she's up there doing her thing, you know, yeah, doing yeah. what she does. Reliable. Yeah very reliable, you know, different every day, changing every day, but reliable in her larger cycle in a way that, yeah, feels very, um, just right sizes things for me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Always there. Thank you for making sure that she made it into the convo. Yeah. Thank you. The moon. <laughs> um, so for this, yeah, okay. was there, is there more? I'm ready. No, no is it, are yeah. you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so for the quick fire round, um, you and I are both going to answer these questions. We can take our time. It doesn't actually have to be like quick. If It's know, not a game show. It's like... not a game show. <laughs> We're not doing sound bites. And if you've already sort of answered the question, you can feel free to expand on it a little bit or, or skip it, whatever. This is like not formal. And if you want me to go first, just let me know. Um, what are you practicing right now? I'm practicing um, physical therapy. Like I'm, I'm practicing um, being in partnership with my body, getting mm. stronger. That sounds very worthwhile. Yeah, I um, just to uh, I'm I am what am I fifty four? So I have a certain amount of you know aches and pains and um, found a physical therapist. So when I think of the word practice, I think of that. I mean, that takes exercise, exercising like that takes a certain amount of effort for me. So, um, it's a, it's a tangible thing. Yeah. Um, I'm practicing, I'm doing this training right now. Um, it's a like a pro training for the wheel of consent, which is a framework developed by Betty Martin. And part of the training, um, one of the practices we do is called waking up the hands. And it's um, where you sort of recline so that you're not like exerting your trunk muscles or your neck muscles. And you put an object um, on your lap, like on a cushion so that you don't have to like reach for it with your hands. So you have like maximal like resting posture comfort. And then you just explore the object with your hands and focus on the, on the sensations in your skin. And you do yeah. that. Yeah. It's like to sort of wake up the, the sensation, you know, wake up the ability to perceive sensation. 
um, almost like a tactile meditation. And, um, and the point is to actually like generate pleasure in whatever that means to you, but to actually like follow the sensation until, you know, you're experiencing relaxation and pleasure. So wow. yeah, that's been a, <laughs> how a often do you practice that? Well, I'm supposed to be practicing it every day, um, during the training and I haven't been doing it every day. I mean, you know, it's like five minutes. You could practice it like several times a day, but I haven't been because I am also practicing being inconsistent, which is something that a, a tarot reader, um, Saray Jarrell Johnson, who I saw in September, talked to me about practicing being inconsistent and incoherent. And so when I don't do my practice every day, I think about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a, a game changer. What or who are you listening to right now? The first thing that comes to mind is, um, bird song because I was sitting, uh, outside this morning. Um, another thing I try to practice is getting outside before sunrise in our small backyard. And, um, so what I heard was a typewriter. And when I say that it was the hum, it was hummingbird. It was like hummingbird, um, t- territorial chitter chatter, I suppose. But it was exactly like a typewriter. Like, and I, I thought, oh, like, oh, it made me think of, you know, writing, like how I want to do more writing. Um, the other thing that I'm listening to is, um, um, Maya Stein is a poet uh, in Maine, and her uh, weekly offering is called Ten Line Tuesday, and it has um, a an audio component, so you can listen to her voice reading her poem. And I love the sound of her voice, and I love hearing poetry that way. Mm. Oh my gosh. How delicious. Can we also just territorial chitter chatter? I'm like, really, that was such an amazing phrase to describe what the hummingbird Yeah. Well, I was wondering, you know, you think about like why animals and birds do certain things and we have it all figured out like, oh, that, you know, this is a, this is I'm always like, why do we think we know? This is this kind of a call. And this is this kind of a call. And like, why is my cat doing that? Oh, she wants this. Like maybe. Maybe it's something completely different. Um, but there was another hummingbird involved. So right, maybe they weren't. Why do I think they were like fighting over the? Oh, well, I, I mean, right. I just territorial chitter yeah. chatter is territorial just a, chatter, yeah. is like such an incredible phrase. Um, write that, like that down. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what or who am I listening to right now? I was do, listening to some um, millennials are killing capitalism is one of the podcasts or Patreons actually that I subscribe to. Um, they do really well. I love it. Political education, um, about all sorts of things. And they just started a live stream. So I was listening to some of their live streams today that I had not caught up on yet while I was, um, crocheting. So yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was. Can you tell me what, what they're called again? Millennials Millennials are killing capitalism. Um, Yeah. It's, um, two guys. Uh, and they interview all sorts of people from all very leftist radical, um, you know, about organizing and abolition, which is something that I care a lot about. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been in, I, they, they ran a study group last winter that I went to several of, and then I petered out black Marxism is a really challenging book and I didn't get through it, but the space that they created to do um, political education and study together. It was a really beautifully facilitated space Mm -hmm. and, um, it felt very, uh, I don't know. It just, it felt like, oh, here's a great way to study with other people. I just like their whole vibe. So Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. why I'm into them. Uh, what are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? Um, I'm reading some poetry. 
I'm reading um the the last thing I like that really inspired me was um science fiction by is it Ted Ted Chang C H I A N G uh the story of your life the story of your life and others is the name of the book and that's also the name of the short story in the book um i read it twice i think in the last year because it had such an effect on me it's a short story that they used to to um that the movie um arrival is uh from it's a it's like a space um movie uh so anyway that was really interesting to me i like science fiction uh let's see i'm reading um i i'm reading a bright dead things by ada limon wow. um i like I'm, I'm trying to read more poetry since that is more abstract and as an abstract painter i feel like i'm trying to communicate things that i don't really know like what they are wow. and i've always felt um like oh i don't understand i don't understand uh poetry but i think it's just about pace for me you know reading it slowly or hearing someone read it you know and as in the case of like maya stein's poetry um so like small bits i'm reading small bits have you heard of the podcast close readings no I, I can't remember the name of the host but he basically brings a poet onto the uh show and has them choose a poem and they do a close reading of it together it's like a long form podcast where they talk about you know, not a very long poem for like an hour. It's fascinating. Um, that I like might, read that, that, that might tell it for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Does that, does the idea of doing that, like listening to two people, like read a poem that closely kind of ruin the whole purpose of why you're saying you want to read it, which is. Uh, no, no, not at all. In fact, you know, those events where um, people read a piece of literature aloud like over a course of a day or two days or three days. I find that really fascinating. But I used to read aloud to my son like every day at night. And we don't, you know, we don't do that anymore. Um, yeah, that's what we do in my I, liturgical book club is we read a book uh, out loud together. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love that. I'm actually um, thinking it'd be interesting to read like literature, actually, like you're saying, to do it. Not necessarily. We've been doing nonfiction, but I think it might be interesting to do literature. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, will that be in the notes? The what you just suggested, the close readings. The, yeah, close readings. Okay. I can put it in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm curious. I'll do that. Um, what are what are what are you reading? Shay? Oh, I'm reading. I'm still. Um, this was in the last episode too. I was still reading it. A book called a novel called A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Um, it's like a 700 page novel about the friendship between four guys. Um, it's actually quite harrowing. Um, it's kind of dark and, but there's enough light in it that it kind of keeps me and she's an incredible writer. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. And you had also mentioned the book by Barbara Kingsolver in oh, maybe demon copperhead my mother sent that to me and i um honestly i i read i think 80 percent of it i had to put it down um and i want to finish it um that it's was worth really, finishing a really good book yeah, yeah. i know I, had to finish it, I, so. I had to put it i had to put it down a few times i listened to it the reader was incredible oh. for the audiobook just shout out to whoever that was um but yeah it was so Barbara Kingsolver is a master, just, just incredible writer, ev evoker of worlds, internal and external. Yeah, I think she has a connection with Arizona. Um, she's actually from the place, or 
she lives in the place where Demon Copperhead takes place. Oh, in Virginia. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if she spent time elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, she manages to do that with her, her novels. Um, what are you watching right now? It could be media, but it could also be other things. Oh, um, so I'm watching, you know, what I'm looking at is art. Um, I just saw um, the, the um, Portland Art Museum has a, an exhibit up right now, Black Artists of Oregon. And I'm planning to go back and see that again. Um, I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at so much art online. Um, I think you meant like shows and stuff. Um, and you could be watching, yeah. like we talked about watching the moon, you know. Oh yeah. Watching the moon, watching, um, there was something else I saw, uh, some art exhibit. Um, yeah. I mean, I watch every day I watch the sky. I love what I, I love looking at the sky, um, light, um, this, the neighbor's tree is on fire right now. It's a tiny mm -hmm. tree, very unassuming tree but it's bright, uh, not even orange. It's like peach, fire, fiery peach color. Um, watching, what's my watching? Um, yeah, there was another art. I think it was online though. Uh, anyway, um, what are you watching? I just finished watching season two of Our Flag Means Death on HBO. I so good. It's it's a it's a comedy, but it's on HBO, so they can like curse and be filthy and whatnot. And it's about a, a queer pirate ship. It's about oh. a gentleman pirate and like a queer pirate crew. It's incredible. It's so smart and so funny and so tender yeah i what, i loved what, it what is it called again our flag means death our flag means death oh on hbo yeah oh. highly recommend yeah thanks for sharing that and i know that i'm not watching it now but um i did watch uh reservation dogs oh how was that oh it's wonderful is it I, i've been hearing about it yeah i think what we just watched was the second season yeah okay i'm gonna check that out i'm glad yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this you mentioned the question you're living into right now what is enough um i'm gonna move us to can i ask you that question what question am i living into yeah question am i living into I think it's kind of, um, and it's been this way for a while. What do I need? What do I want? What do I need? What do I want? Moving from that place. What do I need? What do I want? What do I need? What do I want? Yeah. I feel like that's a, a good place for me to move from these days. Mm -hmm. and, and this I is a little uh, at out of order thing but one of the things that you um one of your offerings is asking the right questions what was it right or asking ask, good questions asking good questions yeah 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 i think that's like in order to find or know what do i need what do i want like the asking the question is that like 60 percent of it or i think it's 80 percent 80 percent question is 80 okay 80 percent okay. thank yeah. you that's what I think. I mean, yeah. yeah, I love that. That's why I love these questions. This, this question and question and answer. So good. Right. What has your attention right now? What has my attention right now? Um, well, I have, we have an ancestors table, a table in the, um, a table in our living room. 
uh, that I call our ancestors table because I put uh, framed pictures of our family and friends that have passed. And I've had it, I think it was like a pan, like came up during the pandemic. Um, and it has my attention because I know my cousin's missing from the table. I need to get, I have a, I need to like frame a, his photo and put it on there. And I also don't have any like marigolds. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I feel like now's the time, you know, so I, I maybe I'll add some calendula. Did so your that cousin pass recently. No, he, he died in 2000. He was 33. Mm -hmm. And Sorry, I huh? just realized that, uh, yeah, he had, um, cancer. I just realized like, oh, he's not on the table. And, and I think I realized it when I, when I, I read your questions in advance and I was like, what has my attention? So it like that. Oh, you're like, that, literally that's what it, has your attention. Right. It, it like, yeah. Um, you know, the paintings I'm working on have my attention right now. My, uh, son, he really has my attention right now mm -hmm. uh, and always, but he's, he's home from school. There's a, um, Portland, public schools, um, teachers are striking. So I'm on, like I'm on, Yeah, I have this quote unquote free time when he's at school. So he has my attention mm. always, but especially today. And what? shout out to the teachers who are yeah. striking for what yeah. they need. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what has your, what has my attention, attention right now? Um, you know, what has my attention is the sycamore tree on my walk. Um, like is looking like the most lush, luscious, sexy starlet I've ever seen in my life. Just so like with her curvy, smooth bark near the top. Cause you know, they're modeled, but like, you know, mottled, um, mm -hmm. sycamores, mm -hmm. but a bigger brand. I mean, just so sinuous and like the leaves like from green to fire red, all the different shades against the blue sky. I mean, and in this particular curve of the road, it's just her. So, I mean, I just feel like she's so, uh, has my attention. I'm like, hello, mm. I see, I see you over there. Like, wow. Letting it all hang out. I, it feels like it's just for me, you know? So she, that tree has my attention for sure. That's beautiful. Yeah. Red. I mean, red, red leaves. I mean, not, not just red, but red, orange, red. yellow, red. and green. Yeah. It's like oh, when wow. that whole rainbow effect is in one yeah. tree against the blue sky, it's just like, what, you know? And are sycamores, um, the same as I want to say plane trees. Yes. They're very closely the, related. Yeah. The, the trunks that look like melted wax. Yes. Sort of. Yes. And, right. I know what you mean by modeled kind of yeah. the gray and beige and exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, I love trees. I, the, I, the, I hear the, you. The leaves on the sycamore tree are like bigger than my head. That's, I mean, the leaf, just one leaf is like bigger than it's like a helmet. It's like, huge. What, and what's the shape? Are of they the tree of the, no, leaf? of the leaves? Are it's they kind sort of, of a, like... a slightly elaborated maple leaf? It's like in the maple leaf kind of. Okay. But it's got some different kind of points on it. That's okay. how I would describe it. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's so, so fleeting. It's so it's fleeting. So fleeting. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, I don't want to miss it. Exactly. So I try not to. <laughs> um, so our final question, how are you evolving right now? I am evolving. Uh, thanks for asking this one. Um I, two things popped in. One is I'm evolving in this. I don't even want to say the word leadership, <laughs> like, like, uh, but I'll, I guess I'll say leadership because I initiated in, um, this group that I'm in a, a separate collective of Pacific Northwest artists. So I initiated like, okay, let's, let's start this group. You know, and I, paid for a professional zoom account and sent out the doodle poll and all these things I've never done before, like, like leading. I, so I had my first two, um, 
Zoom meetings that I, I was, I guess, leading. <laughs> I can't get around that word. Like I'm, I want to say like, I'm not a leader. So I'm initiating. I'm, I'm initiating. Yeah. That, that in my life. Um, yeah, that's how I'm, that's how it sounds I'm, like maybe you're having some kind of 11th house transit with this collaboration project and this like, um, you know, group that you've initiated that you just described. That sounds like some 11th house activity. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I, um, well, when you asked that question too, I was what, what the other thing that popped in was like, oh, I'm not going to be afraid like to, you know, be me. Sounds very general. Like here's to that. But, I mean, <laughs> I mean, how are you evolving? I'm like less afraid to be me. That's like yeah, major. That, yeah, thank you. glad we landed on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yay. here's to that. Um, how are you evolving, Shay? Oh gosh, that's such a question. I'm like feel very unprepared. I actually feel very like devolved today, in not to, just in some ways. I think I'm just, you know, experiencing the time of year. How am I evolving? I. I was about to say, I think I'm, I'm learning to trust more. And as I say that, I can feel myself be like, oh my God, what terrible thing is about to happen? Like to, to like put that to the test, you know, there's my, my disasterizing, catastrophizing, but honestly, I mean, I feel like it's been a year of many curveballs, and I feel like I, I am, I am learning to just, um, you know, keep moving toward what I need and want and trust that what happens is what my life is supposed to be, you know? Mm. I love that. And speaking of uh, the, of catastrophizing, I had, I did have this epiphany that I'll share and I don't know if it'll make any sense, but I thought in terms of my own thinking about thinking, worrying about things happening in the future that, you know, I have to brace myself for, I thought, um, oh, the reason I'm doing that process is because like those things have already happened, like they're in the past. And so I'm like programmed to think they're upcoming. But if I think about them of all, like all in the past mm. that, and then the sort of somatic thing I did to like connect with it was I just stood with my face in the sun, like with my <laughs> eyes closed. And I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to like embrace not knowing what's going to happen in the future. And the impulse I have to, to think, oh, something bad's going to happen. That already happened. Like it's already happened. Like I don't have to, it's not upcoming. I don't know if that like. Your whole description of that and, and the way you're evolving about like being less afraid to be yourself. I'm like, that is so sun card, major mm. arcana 19, like standing with your face in the sun, not afraid to be yourself, not afraid of life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shay. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. This was as delicious as I knew it was going to be, but it really was. And I just thank you for taking the time to be so present and thoughtful and like in it with me. Oh, Shay, I appreciate, I appreciate this so much. I feel your generosity just in having me here and Thank you. And I just, I just appreciate this so much.